Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Kwabena Sapon. I'm a Clinical Chemistry Fellow in the Division of Lab Medicine and the Department of Pathology at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Welcome to this Pearl of lab medicine on tyrosinemia, biochemistry and clinical laboratory investigation. In this talk, we will discuss the biochemical pathway for tyrosine metabolism, identify enzyme mutations or protein deficiencies leading to tyrosinemia, their management, and the clinical lab approach to diagnosis of tyrosinemia. Tyrosinemia just like any inborn error of metabolism, are caused by defects in enzymes needed to metabolize tyrosine. This leads to the accumulation of tyrosine and other harmful metabolites in the blood, skin, eyes, kidneys, and other tissues. These clinically manifest as hyperthyrosinemia and include three main forms. Tyrosinemia type 1, or hepatorenal tyrosinemia is the most common with a prevalence of 1 in 100,000 individuals with the saguenay lac St. John region of Quebec having a higher prevalence. Oculocutaneous or type 2 tyrosinemia has a global prevalence of 1 in 250,000 individuals and are more common in the Arab and Mediterranean populations. Tyrosinemia type 3 or 4-alpha-hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid oxidase deficiency is the rarest form with very few cases reported in literature. It must be noted that tyrosinemia follow an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern where an affected individual would need one of the mutated genes from each parent to have the disorder. Alcaptonuria, Hawkinsonuria, and transient tyrosinemia are also tyrosine metabolism disorders that will be discussed later in this presentation. In the body, phenylalanine is enzymatically modified into tyrosine, which can be incorporated into proteins as a precursor of several neurotransmitters or be broken down via a number of reversible and irreversible reactions using three key enzymes indicated in red in this metabolic pathway shown. I will not be discussing other enzymes involved in this pathway because their deficiencies cause little or no increase in blood levels of tyrosine. In the subsequent pathway, tyrosine undergoes a transamination reaction catalyzed by tyrosine aminotransferase to produce 4-hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid. This allows the copper-containing enzyme 4-hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid deoxygenase to convert 4-hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid to homogenesic acid via an oxidative decarboxylation hydroxylation irreversible reaction. Cleavage of a benzene ring on homogenesic acid produces malleal acetoacetic acid which undergoes isomerization to form fumaral acetoacetic acid. The final irreversible step involves the hydrolysis of fumaral acetoacetic acid to form fumaric acid and acetoacetic acid. Deficiencies in any of the three key enzymes result in accumulation of tyrosine and or some of its metabolites such as succinyl acetone that can be harmful to the body. Tyrosinemia type 1 results from the deficiency of the enzyme fumaral acetoacetic acid hydrolase or FAH which is the terminal enzyme in the tyrosine catabolic pathway. The pathophysiology includes the accumulation of fumaral acetoacetic acid in hepatocytes leading to cellular damage and death. Fumaral acetoacetic acid is further converted to succina acetoacetate and succina acetone. The later metabolite is known to interfere with hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid deoxygenase leading to high plasma concentrations of tyrosine. Succina acetone also inhibits porphobilinogen synthase, an enzyme that catalyzes the biosynthesis of porphyrin from aminolevulinic acid. 
This results in reduced heme synthesis and the accumulation of aminolevolenic acid to set concentrations that allows the induction of neurologic episodes. Tyrosinemia 1 is usually suspected in individuals with positive newborn screening for the presence of succinyl acetone and elevated tyrosine. However, in cases where these metabolites are not detected by newborn screening, untreated tyrosinemia 1 presents with severe liver disease in young children or with severe liver dysfunction usually in the first 12 months. These children may have episodic neurological crisis which includes altered mental status, peripheral neuropathy, pain in the abnormal regions, and sometimes respiratory failure which often requires mechanical ventilation. If this is severe and chronic, individuals develop renal tubular dysfunction that involves a Fanconi-like renal syndrome with abnormal excretion of amino acids in urine, renal tubular acidosis, and phosphate loss. Hypophosphatemic rickets result with normal serum calcium concentrations. With little to no management of tyrosinemia 1, these children stand a higher risk of hepatocarcinoma that often leads to death. FAH deficiency in tyrosinemia 1 results in the diversion of femoral acetic acid to increase concentration of succinyl acetone in the blood and its concomitant increased excretion in urine. There is also elevated plasma concentrations of methionine, phenylalanine, and tyrosine, while the metabolites of tyrosine including hydrozephenyl lactate, hydrozephenyl acetate, and hydrozephenyl pyruvate have significantly higher concentrations in urine. As a result of succinyl acetone interference with the hepatic enzyme PBG synthase, there is increased urinary excretion of aminolevolenic acid. Finally, liver damage and dysfunction result in marked changes in liver function with elevated AFP in serum and prolonged PT and PTT. During newborn screening, Clinical laboratories require the qualitative measurement of succinyl acetone in urine organic acid screen using gas chromatography mass spec. Second tier confirmation tests can be performed on newborn blood spots using tandem mass spec that will provide a concentration of succinyl acetone where their elevations above a reference interval of 5 micromolar are indicative of tyrosinemia 1. In addition, Quantitative analysis by tandem mass spec provides the concentration of tyrosine and methionine in the plasma. It should be noted that an elevated tyrosine outside the reference range can result from a number of conditions, including tyrosinemia 1, 2, transient tyrosinemia of the newborn or other liver diseases. In the same way, elevated methionine can indicate defects in methionine metabolism, liver problems, or homocystinuria. Molecular testing of the FAA gene can also be used to further diagnose the particular genotype in tyrosinemia 1. Of the various variants, four common pathogenic FAA variants have been identified. Preliminary molecular testing involves sequence analysis of the FAA gene, which is followed by targeted gene analysis in populations where those specific genes are common. For example, the proline leucine enzyme mutant is a pathogenic variant that occurs in about 99% of affected individuals of the Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, while the IZS12 plus 5 guanine to adenosine gene mutant is 33.7% of all variants worldwide and most predominantly found in French Canadians. There is currently no cure for tyrosinemia 1. As such, children diagnosed must be provided with appropriate management as outlined in the U.S. and European recommendations. With acute liver failure, individuals often require respiratory support, appropriate fluid management, and blood products that correct the tendency to bleed. Treatment of tyrosinemia 1 include restricted diet control, liver transplantation, and the intake of neticinone. 
Liver transplantation was the only available therapy before nitrosinone became available for treatment of tyrosinemia 1. Currently, liver transplantation is reserved for children with severe liver damage and who do not respond to nitrosinone therapy. Nitrosinone interferes with the second step of tyrosine catabolism, where it inhibits 4-hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid deoxygenase and prevents the accumulation of femoral acetoacetic acid and its conversion to succinyl acetone. However, nitrosinone intake increases the blood concentration of tyrosine and requires patients to have a low tyrosine and phenylalanine diet strategy to prevent the harmful effects of elevated tyrosine concentrations. Nitrosinone and dietary management should be initiated as soon as diagnosis of tyrosinemia 1 is confirmed. Nitrosinone treatment and dietary restrictions have been documented to be associated with improved outcomes, and some studies suggest much better outcomes when the treatment is started at an asymptomatic stage. Effective control of the amount of protein the child consumes is critical for keeping the concentration of tyrosine in the blood within normal limits. High protein containing foods tend to be high in tyrosine and phenylalanine, and thus foods like milk, meat, poultry, fish, eggs, cheese, nuts, and beans should be excluded from the low tyrosine, low phenylalanine diet, in addition to being on vegetarian diet. Special medical food formulation such as Pyrex 1 and Tyros 1 have been developed as milk substitutes for babies with tyrosinemia to replace high protein foods. These formulas contain all the necessary proteins and other nutrients needed for growth in babies, but are tyrosine and phenylalanine free, as indicated on the labels. The other types of tyrosinemia are rare and will be discussed briefly. In tyrosinemia 2, there is a defect in the TAT gene that encodes the tyrosine aminotransferase enzyme, which is involved in the first step of the tyrosine catabolic pathway. This results in elevated blood concentrations of tyrosine. The most distinctive clinical features of individuals affected with tyrosinemia 2 are the painful hyperkeratotic plaques on the soles and palms, known as palmoplantar keratoderma. Plantar surface of the digits may show marked yellowish thickening associated with hyperkeratosis, which are progressive, non pruritic and associated with hyperhidrosis. Ophthalmologic involvement includes the position of tyrosine crystals in the cornea that ultimately leads to ulcers of the cornea, cornea opacity, and photophobia. Developmental delay and intellectual disability is common in affected individuals. Laboratory findings include elevated concentrations of tyrosine in urine and plasma. The metabolites of tyrosine such as 4-hydroxyphenyl pyruvate, 4-hydroxyphenyl lactate, 4-hydroxyphenyl acetate, and N-acetyl tyrosine are detected in urine organic acid analysis using GCMS and they can be quantitated. Further workup might include genetic testing for the TAT gene that encodes the tyrosine aminotransferase protein. Restricted diets low in tyrosine and phenylalanine have been instrumental in the management of tyrosinemia 2, with the concomitant lowering of plasma tyrosine concentrations leading to resolution of the oculocutaneous manifestations seen in these children. The oral retinoids can also be given to treat the associated skin lesion. Tyrosinemia 3 is the rarest form of the three tyrosine disorders, with only a few cases reported in literature. Tyrosinemia 3 is caused by a deficiency in hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid deoxygenase that converts 4-hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid to homogentic acid, leading to accumulation of tyrosine. The few affected individuals are known to have intellectual disabilities, seizures, intermittent ataxia, microencephaly, and other skin or ocular changes with no liver involvement. 
As with the other two types, restricted diets low in tyrosine and phenylalanine is crucial in the management of these individuals. Acaptonuria and Hawkinsonuria are also genetic disorders that affect tyrosine metabolism. Individuals with acaptonuria have a mutation in the HGD gene for the enzyme homogentisate 1,2 dioxygenase resulting in the accumulation of homogentisic acid in the blood and tissues. Homogentisic acid and its oxidized form, acapton, are excreted in the urine, giving it an unusually dark color. The accumulating homogentisic acid causes damage to cartilage that leads to osteoarthritis and heart valves, as well as precipitating as kidney stones and stones in other organs. Hawkinsonuria is an autosomal dominant disorder that occurs when there is partial deficiency of 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvate deoxygenase enzyme. The enzyme produces the reactive intermediate 1-2-epoxy phenylacetic acid, but is unable to convert this intermediate to homogentisate. The intermediate then spontaneously reacts with glutathione to form Hawkinson. This is characterized by failure to thrive, persistent metabolic acidosis, sparse hair, and excretion of Hawkinson in the urine. Another tyrosine abnormality that is found in newborns is transient tyrosinemia. This is not an inborn error of metabolism because this is not caused by a gene defect or mutation. It occurs as a result of delayed maturation of enzymes involved in the tyrosine catabolic pathway. This often occurs in premature infants with no clinical symptoms. Laboratory findings include hyperthyrosinemia, moderate hyperphenylalanemia, and tyrosiluria, and often resolves spontaneously. To summarize, tyrosinemias are autosomal recessive disorders that occur as a result of enzyme defects in the metabolism of tyrosine. Type 1 is the most common and results in accumulation of succinyl acetone and subsequent hepatorenal consequences. Gas chromatography and tandem mass spec have been instrumental in the screening and confirmation of tyrosine metabolites for the diagnosis of tyrosinemia. Currently, low tyrosine and phenylalanine diets in combination with nitisinone have been successfully used to manage these individuals. However, gene therapy strategies such as the CRISPR-Cas genome editing approaches hold a lot of future promise in the treatment and management of tyrosinemia. Thank you for joining me on this pearl of laboratory medicine on tyrosinemia, biochemistry and clinical laboratory investigation. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.